Hello and welcome to this video where we look at using the network days and the filter function together. The network days function is a function that calculates the number of working days between two dates. And one of the options it has is the ability for us to provide it with other non-working days, such as holidays. And we can provide that as a range of cells containing dates. But what if we needed it to be dynamic? Take this example where I have 10 tasks and four different members of staff undertaking those tasks with a date from and to. I want to know how many working days on each task. But that would depend firstly on the two dates, the date range, but then also on the individual. Because over on the right, I have a list for each individual of dates where they couldn't come into work for whatever reason that may have been. So in cell E2, if I begin with my network days function, and I'm going to choose the first option, which automatically excludes Saturday and Sunday as a weekend. The second option, the international version, would allow some flexibility over what days of the week the weekend is. Just using the first one for this example, the start date is column C or C2, comma, the end date will be D2, and then one more comma for this holidays argument. It's an optional argument, you don't have to provide it, but this is what this video is all about. The holidays I want to provide, or the non-working days, doesn't have to be a holiday, is dependent upon the individual. So in this row, it's Joe. But this is where we want the filter function to come in and help, to dynamically bring across the correct range of dates. The filter function will ask us for the array. Now that data on the right hand side is formatted as a table and that table is called staff. So if I enter staff, comma, and then what ones are we including? Well, we are including the ones from this individual. So in this case, Joe. So I'm going to select the range of names in row one the headers of this table, and ask if it is equal to the value in cell B2. One more comma brings me on to the argument of what to do if an empty range is returned. I'm going to enter a zero there, and then close off the filter function, and close off network days, and run with this formula. And it tells me that there are two days for Joe there. If I click on that cell and copy it down, I then get the answers for the others also. Now, if we want to check if this is working, let me write a network days function in the column next to our answers there. And I'll use this function in the same way, but exclude the holidays. So all this does is finds the difference and excludes the Saturday and Sunday. And as I copy this down, we can now get a quick insight as to whether it's working or not. So if we look at Kelly in row two, I can see that seven days were returned with our formula, whilst it's eight if you don't include the dates on the right. And we can see that this task two is from the 10th to the 19th. And when you look at the holidays to the right hand side, Kelly was off on the 17th only. So the fact that there is a one day difference confirms that that seems to be working. So the filter function has correctly gone and returned the dates from the Kelly range. So I'm using an example here with different members of staff and being able to dynamically bring across the correct member of staff because they may work different days or they've been ill in that range or busy on other projects, whatever it is which meant they couldn't work on that task. But it could also be a dynamic way of returning 
holidays from different countries or opening times of different offices. So another cool way of using the filter function. Now what we just did with the filter function, you could also achieve with the XLOOKUP function. So if I go back to the first formula and wipe out that filter function we have, and let's look at XLOOKUP achieving it. So it's XLOOKUP, the lookup value is the name of the individual, the lookup array is the table headers, the return array is the table, so we're giving it all four columns there, and then we don't need any more of the arguments, because we are doing the exact match, and we are looking top down, etc. If I close off the bracket for the xlookup function and run it, I get the same answers. So xlookup can also dynamically return the correct member of staff state range and feed it to network days to work dynamically. If you didn't love these beautiful new functions, filter and xlookup, then hopefully you do now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.